Good morning, YouTube. Let's put some ball joints in this truck. Alright guys, first thing we're going to do on this, we're going to take this caliper off and move it over here out of the way. So then I, I can... Uh, uh, go ahead and take this whole unit off so I can work on the bust of the bust of ball joints and but then we've got to get the uh, the tie rod end off <clears throat> which is not really a big deal that's uh, a little after 10 this morning our parts well they've got one part in but the other part will be in at 12:30. We got they got the lower ball joint in, but the upper won't be in until 12:30. So, um, let me get out of your way here in just a second. I don't know if what you're seeing here. But... First blood. Now I better go get that grease out of that cut. And I'll be back with you. Okay, I'm back. Monkey fixed me up. Where you at? There. Yank some skin off my damn thumb. I was just getting ready to go get my gloves and I thought, well, I'll get these two bolts first. Well, story of my life oh that hurts all right so anyway like I was saying then we gotta get the tie rod end off of there that brake line looks to be okay so I'm not going to crack it loose that's why I'm just taking the caliper off. So, not too bad. The bottom ball joint's 25 bucks. The top one's 70. So, you know, I mean, could have been worse, so she's okay. That's the main thing. caliper bolts now I forgot to press the caliper in but it should come off uh, the trucks just getting tired you know I mean everything's original on here except for what I've put on gonna set that there for now I may have to wire it up we're gonna go ahead and pull these pads out so they'll be out of our way I'll set them aside brake pads these are the ones we just put on the other day last week all right now all right. let's take this ball joint off right here so we got to take this cutter pin out, take that nut off, that's called a castle nut, and then we're going to whack this right here. We're going to hit it with a hammer. Oh, shit. We're going to hit it with this little ball peen hammer here. Right there, we're going to hit it real hard, and that should drop down out of there. Sorry about the air compressor running. It should shut off here in a minute. I fell underneath the jack right there it is now anyway all right now us. all we gotta do is whack this right there you guys can't see shit 
All right, we're gonna whack that right there. And that should drop down. So give it a couple whacks. Don't hit that bolt if you can help it. Usually I put the nut back on there, but since it fell underneath the jack, I can't get it. That way you don't screw up the thread. Um, a lot of guys, they'll take what's called a tuning fork or a ball joint remover or a tire on end remover or whatever. But if you're going to be reusing parts, I find that a lot of times it screws them up. So, I need a bigger hammer. You don't want to try not to hit that. So, just want to hit that knuckle right there. hammer I could probably get a there it is yeah you just want to hit this knuckle come here right there because you don't want to you don't want to hit that piece so all right let's get this up on the bed of the truck Got you up here in the bed of the truck. Now this one's the same way. Okay. What you're going to have to do. Take that pin out. Same way. Take that nut off. And smack that down there. And that, that'll drop out. So. Alright guys. Now let's see if I can get you knock knock the camera off here. I got the nut off. That's called a castle nut. See it kind of looks like the top of a castle. Now this you can hit here because we're not going to reuse this but the problem is if it don't start going beat it around here too because if that pin's over then you won't get it off but I think we'll be alright on this one alright there's one failure This whole, this whole assembly here is called the steering knuckle. So, let's go ahead and take these bolts out and get that off of there. You guys see? You gotta love pneumatic tools, right? There's what's left of that. The other part of this is on the lower A-frame or upper. So, anyway, it's on the A-frame. All right, so we got that junk. Okay, now we've got to get this one out. And to do that, we've got those two bolts there and those two bolts there. And this should slide out of here. Alright guys, so we got this cute little guy here. He's my 3 8 inch. Just a cheap one. Central pneumatic. And these are 12 millimeter. There's one. There's two. guy he's my friend monkey's back here behind me watching me do surgery on her vehicle and another vehicle going past of course as always so this upper should just may need to persuade it but 
they can be finicky but because what happens is these squeeze together can you guys see anything? yeah these squeeze together right here so sometimes you may have to unsqueeze it and there you go that's the other part of the upper so right, now there's four bolts there's two here and then two on the back side of it but I've got to move this jack so let me get this out of the way I'll show you how to take that off and then we'll be ready for new parts sorry guys I forgot to turn you back on I've got these two nuts off I've got that nut off and let's see if this got enough balls to I should be able to whack that with a hammer. Yeah, I think that'll tap down off there. And there it is. Alright. So. Now, when we get to put this back together, I'll have to jack that up. As you've seen, it kind of came down, but that's because of the pressure on the spring, but that's no big deal. So, as you can see, done some grinding there, so these are, uh, I do believe these are grade 8 case hardened bolts, so, uh, I'm not sure what we're going to do about that. Alright, well, this is all I can do for now. So, I'll get back with you as soon as we get the parts. We have got our new parts here. We've got the new upper ball joint. And they have what you call grease zerts or grease fittings. So I can grease these ones. As you can see, the old ones didn't. They didn't have a place where you can grease them. So... Once the grease goes away, you're done. It came with new bolts, new castle nut. It's got the new uh, grease zert. The same way with this one. This is the lower ball joint with the steering knuckle on it. And it also has a place for the grease zert, which is right. Where the hell is it? It's just a bolt. Anyway, it does have a grease cert with it. I think it's still in the box. And it goes right there so you can grease them. And this one didn't. Now this one, this is how they go like this. So this one will go down in there. But first, that's the reason why I took this one off. This didn't actually have to come off, but... If you look right in there, this has to be pounded out now. Once this is down on there, I'll have to see if I'm going to have enough threads coming up through. If not, I'll have to put flat washers on this. Because the only way you can get this piece here is to buy the whole, um, the whole lower control arm. So, I may have to heat this around here. I don't know, but I'll show you how to get that out. And then we got to drive this part out so that's what we've got there and also it came with new bolts new nuts of course new cast castle nut and the uh, cotter pin so looks like all I'm going to need to do is find my grease cert for that and another cotter pin which I have so but we got a deal on this stuff. It should have been uh, one was $69.99 and one was $24.24. And uh, we got it all for $71. The guy cut us a break because we're always going in there. So he did good. With these were bought in advance at advance. So what we got to do is we got to get this piece knocked out. 
and then we can start uh, putting everything together. I like to set it all out and make sure we've got everything. So, and I'll make sure I got enough grease in my gun. If not, I'll have to pack it. So, let me get that taken care of, and we'll go ahead and we'll get this knocked out. Like I said, we may have to heat it, but uh, we might not. We'll just have to see. So, all right, let's see if we can beat this out of there. Like I said, I may have to pop that rubber off there and heat this around there. I don't know. Let's see. Looks like it's moving. So I'm trying to get that dead center there in that circle. And there it is. Popped it right out of there. there's what's left so then this piece will go in there like that the castle nut will go on there so well you need a nut uh, like a washer. washer yeah I don't know I don't know yet huh yeah. maybe yeah. see that right there yeah okay so that's what that does so, uh, if I do need one, it'll probably just be one. Because, see, this should be straight across here. As oh. you can see, it's angled down. Mm -hmm. should be straight across. Mm. So. Um, Is that from hitting the, the pavement? And going yeah, that's so from far? grinding 800 feet down the road like that. Just like putting it on a grinder. Oh. So, we'll see what we can do with that. Well, we're not paying... $225 for a new, a lower A-frame. No. So, yeah. all right, I'll be back with you. If I'd have known that other piece was going to come out of there so easy, I wouldn't have pulled the whole thing off. But, I thought I was going to have some problems with it. So what we're going to do, is we're going to put these bolts back up in there, just like that. And those two coming down through should go in the bottom there. So what we're going to do is jack this back up into position and hope nothing goes wrong. Alright, so let's get her jacked up here. And you want to leave room for them bolts to come down through. This should go up together once I start jacking this up. So. There it goes. They lined up and they're down through. Okay. Now, just go there. Oh, you guys can't see what I'm doing, can you? Okay. Those there. Like that. don't want to strip these out because they they don't come out so or they won't come out very easy so always start them by hand make sure we got enough room there and we're going to tighten them up manually with a big wrench and that section is done okay now let's let this down we got to get it out of our way go slowly okay. 
Okay, I'll get you in here a little closer. All right, so the other one's going to go right in there. Let's go get it. Because when we put this on, we're going to put the steering knuckle up into the top one. I'm going to start a bolt or start a knot. And then we're going to jack this right up into place, okay? All right, now, no, I didn't forget to put that grease dirt in. I'm just going to do it after I get this in there. That way, if I got a tap on this and I miss, I'm not going to hit the grease dirt. Let's tap her in. So remember, we had to finagle it to get it to come out, so. All right, now, we're going to drop our bolts down in. Just like that. Alright. Now I'm going to start the nuts on. Now they're only going to go so far. These are lock nuts. I'll try to show this to you the best I can. Where you at here? See, one end's flat and one end's got a bevel on it. Like right here. There's a bevel. So it's going to go up like this. Okay, so you're only going to, you, you can't, you won't be able to screw it on because they don't have lock washers. They got lock nuts. So you won't be able to screw it all the way on by hand. And I do believe these are 12 millimeter. I think that's what I took them off with. Let me see here. Yeah. They should be the same as... These may be 13s because they're aftermarket. Okay, so I got to get a 13 wrench and a 13 socket. Here we go. particular order on these just a preference all right air compressor kicked on now Let's put the, uh, let's go ahead and get the steering knuckle unit. Okay, guys. She had to run back up the parts store, just right up the road. Um, about a mile and a half, two miles. Uh, they forgot to add that greaser. They sent me the plug. Well, it's not their fault, but it had the plug in there. A lot of guys will just grease them and then plug them. But I like to have that in there. And, okay, let's go ahead and put this on. This is going to go like this. Down the side there. The hammer, you may want to give a little tap. Now, it came with two new bolts, but I'm going to use the old ones because it's still got some Loctite on there and I don't have any. But also, see this one's got like a collar on it. Let's see that collar right there. And this one don't so I like to have that collar right up against there and I don't like using washers on something like this so I'm just gonna go ahead and put these back in here get them started there and we'll have our steering knuckle on there Right. 
Now you want to make sure these are tight. And that's how you do that. You got to make sure that those are tight because we use them old bolts and you know threads will stretch. I know what a lot of guys are going to say. Ah, oh, you need to use the new ones. Well, I don't like not having a collar on there and I'm not going to put a washer on those. I don't like doing that on something as pertinent as this. You going, monkey? I'm going. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Bruno. Love you. He thinks he's going somewhere. <laughs> Hang on, I'll be back. <laughs> Bruno's off. Okay. Bruno was out there waiting by the truck he wanted to go. Alright, so I can fix these. I'm going to use, these are the ABS wires. Let me zoom in on you for you there, if I can. These are the ABS wires. Some of them are kind of like real, real tiny, but these will work. I've got these um, heat shrink butt connectors. And you put them on, for those of you that don't know, once you get them crimped, you heat these ends, and they shrink around the cable, makes them watertight. Alright, so now, oh, I love you too, bye. <laughs> so, we're going to go out and we're going to put this in. I think what I said outside was I was going to put the top in and start the bolt. Um, the easier way to do it is put the bottom in, start the bolt, instead of trying to hold that up and because that is pretty heavy especially when you have no strength like me um, so I'm gonna put the bottom in then we'll just jack it right up until the top goes right into that one there what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that, that part there and we're gonna put it in this hole here hopefully you can see it I got you back out as far as way as I can and you start that in there and then you can move this around where you need to move it and then we're just going to jack this right up in to position here, okay? From here to there, and that's going to go in there, all right? So let's go ahead and do that. Be careful, keep your hands out of the way of everything. There it goes. And it is starting in there. Just like that. And when you see the truck itself start to raise, that's when you know you've went enough. Okay. Now let's go ahead. We're going to put our castle nut on this one here. Bruno Settle. Sorry. And I'm in your way. But anyway, the castle nut will go on there. See if I can get you down here a little bit. It's, I know you can't see it's back up in here, but go ahead and screw that on. Get as tight as you can get it. Now, leave your pressure on there, because if you don't, it'll drop the bottom A-frame out. see what I did <laughs> I forgot to bring that back around through there life happens right no matter how many times you do this you can make mistakes but at least we didn't get it all put back together right and these wires here well you can't these two wires here are going to hook on to these ones okay so let's get this back up in here all right make sure everything's out of the way okay we're good we're good all right everything's looking good down here now we can jack it up into position again Let me bring you around here so you guys can see, maybe. Alright, I'm going to lower this down one more time. Alright. 
so you guys can see where that's going to go. Right in the middle of your screen there, okay? Can't see nothing like a sweat mice. So you're going to want to line that up. Be careful of the threads. And jack it up in the position. And you keep going until you see the truck just start to raise. Watch your frame too. And once the truck starts to raise, you went high enough. And there it is. I'm high enough. Okay, now we can put our castle nut on. Now see a lot of guys on something like this, there's enough room. They'll go ahead and put that top, the top ball joint in, and then slide this back into position. But sometimes it's a little harder that way. Alright, now I'm going to put that on. I'm going to go ahead and tighten that up. And I'm going to put the bottom one, tighten it up. And then we'll, uh, we'll just, it's just putting it back together and we'll grease it. Um, this piece here, this is your tie rod end. Hang on a second and I'll show you. I'll get you down here where you can see. Alright, that's your tie rod end. And it's going to go right into position there. Okay. Now, as you can see, that's original too. There's no grease fitting on that either. But uh, it feels pretty good. Feels snug. See, if that thing would have went bad, I could have fixed it out on the road. But I couldn't have fixed it last night anyway because they didn't have the parts till today. So, all right. I've got a memory card blinking. All right, guys, um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this nut on, which is another castle nut. See, looks like a castle. And then I'm going to tighten all of them up. And then we'll put the caliper back on. I've got it. Everything all buttoned up. I've got the brake pads back on. Just kind of wanted to show you how these things work. Um, you just heat them up. You can use a heat gun. You can use a regular lighter. See, they're shrinking right, right up. Now, I don't know if these will go clear around the wire or not. But, I'm going to tape them up anyhow. So. And then I'll, uh, I will secure them there. I've already turned the wheel all the way. So they're not going to stretch. There's all you do with them. And then tape them up. go clip off your excess that's good to go now, as you can see I've got my grease fitting in there and I've got it pointed pointed that way because I don't want to point out this way because I don't want to have to pull the tire off every time I grease that thing stick that on there And I've got pressure on it on the jack so it'll take grease easier and I've been having problems with this thing priming for, there we go for some reason now these I'm only going to go until I see this boot down here I know you can't see it but when you see your rubber boot starting to fill up and it seems like it's a little tight that's good enough a lot of guys 
they like to take them until grease comes out. I don't like that. Used to be that way, but anymore you don't have to do it that way. Now, do the same thing to the bottom. And we're going to put the wheel on it after we do our final checks, make sure everything's taken care of. All right. We're on a home stretch. Let's get this wheel on here. All right, we'll get our... Our lug nut started. Lost one, just had them all here a second ago. I hope you guys learned something. I tried to do it as in depth as possible, but it's kind of hard to you know run the camera at the same time you're doing this because you got to move around a lot. And uh, I just had all five of them in none of you. You got to move around a lot, and I've only got two hands, you know, so. Uh, so it was right beside me the whole damn time. All right, let's get these tightened up. Noise alert. Compressor kicked on. Right. Feels good. Get our block out of here. Man, I wore me out today. All right, let's set it down. I'm pretty sure we're gonna need air in that tire. Not much though. How much is in it? Yes, see, right? It's got 32. It takes 44. I'm going to run it up to about 40. I like a little softer ride. A little too much, 45. All right, about 42, that'll work. Now I'll make sure the other side's 42. And we're going. Then we're gonna take it for a ride. Well, there it is. It's all back together and good to go. I hope this has helped somebody. Um, she said the steering wheel felt funny, like there wasn't nothing there, and about five seconds later it dropped. So, 
Uh, 65 miles an hour, that's not good, so. If something just don't feel right, you guys check it out. But I know she didn't have time. This was not her fault. Um, it just, you know, parts get old, you know, going over bumps and speed bumps and railroad tracks all its life for 461,000 miles. Not bad. So, uh, now we got to do the other side. I'll save you from from that. I'm not going to do it today, but they're original too. So, um, never fails, does it? So anyway, uh, we'll get them done, get alignment done, get some tires on it, and drive it a little longer. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, Monkey, she's okay. Yeah, wasn't her fault. She felt bad. She's ready to cry last night seeing her truck up on a rollback, and that's it's never been on a rollback before. So <laughs> I said, "All right, Daddy, fix it for you." So we got her going. So uh, not too bad. We got a deal on the parts. They were seventy-one dollars and one hundred fifty-dollar tow. So which tow? That wasn't too bad considering what they had to do to get it up on the up on the rollback because you. You know, they they couldn't tow it with a tow truck because there's no wheel on this side, and then uh, so they had to drag it up on, and it was real careful not to bend anything else up. So, so that was pretty good. So, anyway, guys, again, thanks for watching. I'll chat at you guys soon, and uh, have a great week. So, Shea Bear, the myth, the man, the legend, and the old truck. <laughs> We're gone for now. Bye, bye, guys. Take care.